You are our king. The king of every king, of every lord, of every emperor, of every czar, of every president, of every pharaoh, of every Caesar. You rule and you reign over your world. And you do it beautifully. Lord, your ways are so much higher than our ways. And right at the center of your plan for bringing heaven to earth and showing us how kind and gracious and good you are, you caused a man to rise from the dead and overcome the power of the grave. And that is what gives us, it, it, it shatters our, our, our doubts and it destroys despair and it causes hope to come bursting into our sadness and our confusion. And, and, and it gives us the knowledge that you are in control and that your ways are perfect. God, God, give us faith to believe what you say in your word so that we can live by faith and not by sight. And we ask this in Jesus' name, the name of the resurrected one. Amen. Well, Easter, Resurrection Day, so excited to be here with you, and I'm so happy to be home. Got to spend the day with my wife. My kids are visiting some friends today. Thankful for that. And uh, I want to talk with you about this book here again, The American Covenant. We've been going through it. Today is day 74 of our 100-day plan. Our 100-day plan to to see America become what it can be. And God says that a nation is blessed when they honor him with their whole heart. And our forefathers understood that through the covenants that they made with God, those sacred promises with God and with one another. It's our only hope, it's the only way we're getting back to those blessings and to blessings that are even greater than they ever were in the beginning. And um, I wanna talk with you about Easter. I'm so excited. My friend Marshall Foster, who wrote this book, texted me today, and, and he wrote some things that I want to share with you. He reminded me of this, and I want to remind you. Before Jesus Christ, there was no understanding of the concept of liberty in the ancient world. Now, listen, uh, I was never a big history buff, but I'm on fire for his story because it helps me understand today and what decisions we need to make so that we have good consequences in the future for our kids. The ancient world had no concept of liberty, no concept of freedom. What's that? What's, what's freedom? I mean, I mean, if you lived in the ancient world, you lived under the tyrant's boot, under the king's heel, under the czar's sword, Under the, under the tyranny of a warlord or some king or emperor or tribal chief. If you lived in China, if you were in Asia, you were building the, 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 the Great Wall of China. You, spelt, you spent your whole life serving the emperor. If you were in Egypt, you were a slave, hauling stones and sand and building pyramids for the, for the honor of the king, you lived and died as a slave. If you were in South America, if you were in Africa, you were building ziggurats. You were, you were, you were ultimately a, a tiny little ant in a, in, in, in a colony. You were one little bee in a giant hive. You were one little termite in the, in the midst of a giant army that lived and died to serve the king, the emperor, the czar, the warlord, the tribal chief. You had no freedom. Freedom, what you think? Your freedom of thought, your freedom of speech? What are you talking about? Didn't exist. Extinct, gone, nothing. Your freedom to work and enjoy the fruit of your labor to provide and protect your family? Fairy tales, doesn't exist before Jesus Christ. And then Jesus enters the world 2,000 years ago and declares in the book of Luke chapter 4 that he had come to set the captives free. What? 
someone's come to set us free? I mean, you probably didn't even know you were a captive. That's just normal. You're a slave. You're, you're, you're a pawn. You're a peon. You're, you're just a cog in the machine. He says, no, you've actually been taken captive, and I actually came to set you free. And after Jesus died on a cross to pay our penalty of death for us, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The paycheck that you and I deserve for sinning against God is death. Jesus paid that for us so that we could live. He then rose from the grave, ascended to his father's throne where he now rules the nations. Jesus rules Uganda. He rules the Sudan. Jesus is the prince of Turkey and Iran and Iraq and the United States of America. Jesus rules over the United Nations. They don't realize that. They think that these are the leaders of the nations and they may be only at the will and pleasure of God for the time God has appointed for them, but he rules over the United Nations and over the universe. That's who Jesus is. And then Dr. Foster says this, he says, Jesus then sent out an army of reconciliation, an army of compassion that had a message of reconciliation. And it's spoken of in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. Look it up. 1 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21, if you're taking notes. And, call, and Paul calls true believers ambassadors of reconciliation, calling out to the world, be reconciled to God. God has made terms for your peace. You who were enemies of God because of your pride and selfishness and sin, you don't need to run from him anymore. He's offering terms of peace and mercy. Be reconciled to God. He's kind and gracious and merciful and patient and long-suffering. And he doesn't have plans to destroy you, but to give you a hope and a future. If you'll come to him, be reconciled to God. And he'll adopt you into his family as a son, as a daughter. And wherever this liberating message of Christ has been preached, and it's been preached throughout the world, wherever it has been believed and then integrated into law and every institution, into homes, into marriages, into the institution of church, wherever it's been integrated into civil government, societies have increasingly become free. Did you know that? Countries like England, countries like Holland, countries like Scotland and Ireland, countries that were just drenched in tyranny and slavery and the abuses of a king or a queen or an emperor or a czar or a tyrant or a tribal chief or a warlord, where the message of Jesus has been proclaimed and believed by the people and then integrated into the laws and the institutions of schools and churches and civil government, those societies have broken those chains of slavery and become increasingly free as they're believed, as they're integrated. But as doubt and unbelief begin to take over, tyranny begins to rear its ugly head. And on page six of the New American Covenant, and what Marshall's referring to is, I'm reading out of this one printed decades ago. He's got the brand new one available. You ready? There it is, it's the new one. He's got it, it's finally available. I know you guys want it bad. It's the American Covenant, and check this out. It's a beautiful cover. Look at it compared to this one. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's gonna be available next week or the, or, or the week after. Uh, I, had, I had the privilege of writing the forward to it. On the back, check this out. There's a picture of us at the Campfire Revival. That's you and me, and it's got a beautiful, I mean, it's just, it's just gorgeous. And on page six of the brand new one, he quotes the great theologian, J.C. Ryle of the last century. And listen to this quote. This is our Easter quote for the night. He said, we cannot de deny the effect that Christianity produced on mankind. 
You can't deny it. If you're honest with history, you can't deny the effect that Christianity has had. And you say, wait a minute, Christianity is, there's, there's, the, what about the Crusades? What about, what about, what about Hitler and, and, and the slaughtering? No, 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 no. Hitler had nothing to do with Christianity. He, he used it as a cloak for his evil. That man was as much of a Christian as, uh, you know, um, a carnivore is a vegetarian. He, he had nothing to do with Christ. He used religion to advance his evil causes, and Christ himself laid down his life for his enemies. And when people believe that and adopt those principles into their country, it has an unbelievably liberating and beneficial effect. The world before and the world after the introduction of Christianity were as different worlds as light is from darkness, as night is from day totally different it was christianity that starved idolatry do you get that when kings and queens set themselves up as idols for people to worship made themselves the head of their religion christianity stepped in and said no the true god made your king and your queen and he rules over them and he's not selfish like your king and your queen he lays down his life for you so that you could live and be free. He sacrifices himself to demonstrate his love for you and starved idolatry in the ancient world. And he emptied the heathen temples. People were like, God is not angry with us. He loves us. Let's leave these heathen temples and go to the God of Christianity who demonstrates his love and that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Christianity elevated women. Women were not seen as the equals to men, but in the scriptures, Jesus told men, love your wives as I've loved my bride, the church, and gave myself up for her. Lay down your life for your wife and raise the whole tone of morality. Jesus said, Love your neighbor as yourself, and even more, love your enemies. Love your enemies. And he improved the, the condition of children and the poor. Children were seen as, you know, they're, they're not important. And the poor, well, they're just a drain on society and the economics. No, Jesus said, let the little children come to me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he said, as you, as you, as you do unto the poor, as you give them a cup of water, as you help them, you do it unto me. And as you don't do it for them, you don't do it unto me. Jesus was, was putting himself there on the level of, of, of the poor and saying, they're important, serve them, be kind to them. And that's the illustration of your love and devotion to me. He said, these are facts which we may safely challenge all other enemies of revealed religion to try to deny, try to deny history, try to deny the liberating, beautifying, heavenizing effect of Christianity upon the world. True Christianity, where it's truly believed, where it is truly applied and integrated into all aspects of your marriage, that makes it better. Your home with your children makes it more heavenly. Integrated into the laws of your nation produces freedom every time where it is believed and followed. And Dr. Foster said this, be of good cheer, the Savior has come. Lots to be depressed about, just turn on the news, but be of good cheer, the Savior has come. And he's bringing not only salvation to you and to me, but healing and liberty to the world. And guess what is growing? Guess what? His kingdom is growing every day. His kingdom is growing, it's not shrinking. Despite what others may say, his kingdom is winning, it's not losing, despite what others may say. Never fear, the day will come, and it is coming, when the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will fill the land just like the waters already cover the sea. The campfire revival is just a small manifestation of the growing kingdom of God on earth, and you and I are part of it and it's winning, and it's growing. And what we're talking about right here is the cosmic perspective on Easter. 
Easter is not about eggs and bunnies. You may look that up on Google and you may see little designs of eggs and bunnies. That's not what Easter is about. That's not what, what the resurrection day is all about. Resurrection day is all about the final crushing of the head of the serpent. Do you know the reference in Genesis? And it is the ultimate victory of good over evil. That is what Easter is all about. Covenant keepers win. Thank you, King Jesus. I would love to keep playing this worship music. I'd love to keep just joining you in, in worshiping and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and who is to come. Of the increase of his government and of his peace, there shall be no end. Talk about the resurrection tonight. Talk about the significance of that with your family and your friends. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow night. God bless you guys. Happy Easter.